Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Ravi, you were easy to see because you block out a lot of space. See, you should be kind to your guest speaker, shouldn't you? That's all horseshit. If you learn nothing from this seminar at all, you got a lot to learn other than trying to grow your hair back. You got a lot to learn is to be more selfish. We know why, don't we, young lady? When Johnny and Ravi, well, hopefully you didn't live in a neighborhood with a Ravi in it, but anyway, when Johnny and Ravi were playing with their toys and Johnny had more toys and so your mother said, let Ravi have some. Fuck Ravi and the horse he rode in on. He should have had richer parents. And you never heard that from your parents, did you? Anybody? No. It would have been the first time in 30 years. You're a product of a fucked up world. And the ones that fucked you up the most are your parents. Where's the chubby uh, Chinese guy I, I met earlier that uh, stole the, or a relative of his stole an antique spoon from us about 15 years ago? And then he came back to another seminar, and like magic, the antique spoon showed up again. Now, if it was one of those programs on TV, let's see, the guy was there, the only guy that was there, and then 15 years later, the fucking spoon showed up again, and he was the only guy. A coincidence, right? Except he said the Chinese guy wouldn't have brought it back, right? He would, he would have kept stolen. Okay. At the end of the seminar, we're going to give you seven or eight ethnicities that you should not do business with. One of us is Ravi, Indian. You only deal with these ethnicities after you're experienced. I am thankful for he and his wife showing up. Uh, they're gonna, he's going to talk, give you some Q&A uh, after dinner, and then tomorrow morning he's going to give us a presentation on how his... Uh, uh, we're going to cut the fraud and all that shit out, but I mean, how he made his money, or started to make his money, how he pivoted six times, I believe, six times, and you people are foolish enough to think you're going to get it on the first time. How many in the room think you're going to get it on the first time? Not the first deal, but the first um, industry you're going to. Three. If you do get it on the first time, it will be luck and more serendipity than design. We only have two gals, which doesn't make any difference. Um, we're one short. We had 25. The 25th person was a 17-year-old kid who was a rock star in his life. Uh, just turned 17. But uh, for whatever reason, his father and he decided that he shouldn't be here exposed to you misfits. Just imagine. Expo Does anybody have a 17-year-old kid in here older? How many? So the, the other people can't really relate. They, I had one of the kids I talked to before now uh, was uh, the, uh, a male nymphomaniac, kind of. So one of you, you can just figure out which one it is, uh, that was more interested in uh, getting his, his, his pee-pee wet, or I, I'll say equally as interested in getting his pee-pee wet as making money. The odds are against him because you can't do both. There's a thing called sexual transmutation in thinking go rich. For those of you that haven't read the book, I'm not saying to read the book, because Napoleon Hill never met Andrew Carnegie. That's a whole other story. That's all a myth, which I was a believer of for 40 years. It doesn't really matter that he met Andrew Carnegie or not. The book is filled with pearls of wisdom. But just imagine a 66-year-old man living on Knob Hill in San Francisco, a rich area at the time, and a 19-year-old young boy. Just think about that. A 19-year-old young boy. 
We spend a three-day weekend together. Hmm. Do you really believe that happened? We were at Andrew Carnegie's castle a couple years ago. My lovely wife took me to my 75th birthday. And we were there as one of the few guests during Corona Rona time. And um, you can't find anybody uh, that uh, knows of that trip. Bruce the Whipple, who I believe went to the Andrew, Car Andrew Carnegie Institute and asked questions about it. There's no record of that meeting ever happened. Conveniently, that book, Thinking Grow Rich, was published the week after Andrew Carnegie died. What a fucking coincidence! Yet it is full of pearls of wisdom. Selfish. If you had been more selfish in your lives heretofore, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. If you had more self esteem, not just more, because most of you have little or no self esteem, if you had a lot of self esteem, like Baron Trump, tonight you're going to watch a little eight minute film on uh, how Baron Trump is raised. You will find no similarities to how you were raised. Our children were raised, some of the things that uh, Mrs. Trump has done to raise her pride and joy, we did raising our three kids. But there's a reason you're sitting here. Man's greatest burden is unfulfilled potential. I am, or they used to say, I don't know if they say it anymore, I have been fighting above my weight. Is that the right way to say it? For 50 years. Now I'm not above my weight because I'm you know, super successful. But when I was young, they say Danny's fighting above his weight. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Because now, everything I said, I have a whole podcast, Dan told you so. To bring it to home, I said that uh, Nicholas Sturgeon was a fucking thief i.e., she's a fucking thief. I said her husband was a fucking thief, i.e., he's a fucking thief. I said that the controller of uh, Scottish National Park were fucking thieves. I said that Braverman, who's home secretary, I think she is, down south in England, was a brain-dead mongoloid idiot for sending, first of all, two or three hundred million pounds down to Rwanda for uh, migrants without ever going to fucking Rwanda. My wife and I have tried to set up a charity in Rwanda. We've been there twice. Nobody asked my advice. So the new name of the podcast is Dan Told You So. But yet I'm going to tell you what I've learned over 50 years. And most of you in this room will be incapable of following the steps. But Dan, why do you mention those fucking steps so often? Why do I? Because I know you're not going to do it. And this, this, this guy with the high forehead is wondering, I wonder why. Well, by tomorrow afternoon, you're going to know why they don't do it. Because it's bloody hard. Because virtually very few of you in this room, I've already alluded to it twice, have any self-esteem. No self-esteem to brag about. Why would your parents do that to you? Now, the flip end, I was hard on my kids, our kids, and my kids want to know why was dad hard on us? So, because you can't satisfy the kids. And now kids actually think they have rights. They're entitled. Some of you dipshits in this room think you have rights. You don't have any fucking rights here. You better, you know, brush your teeth or wipe your ass or clean out your ears or whatever you have to do to get rid of that notion because I'm going to tell you exactly how it is in the real world. The world that you, and hope's not a strategy, but hope, hopefully that you aspire to. Now, several of you in this room believe Steve Jobs, uh, Zuckerfucker, um, Elon the Musk, uh, amongst others, have something uh, desirable in the fact that they've been super successful. I think everybody would agree that they've been super successful. 
what you don't focus on, and maybe you shouldn't focus on because you, you, you haven't been in that environment, what price did they pay? What was their pay price to act? Did they cut a deal? Some people say they cut a deal with the devil. Maybe. But they made great sacrifices. And all the above names I just mentioned are ruthless. Steve's dead was ruthless. They're all ruthless. Has anybody ever described you in the wildest imagination as a, a ruthless young black man? No. That's too bad. Ruthless. And we're going to go through some definitions of ruthless. We've got a farmer, fifth generation farmer in the audience. That's too bad. Farming has been out of vogue for at least 50 years. Has it been longer than 50? Maybe. But he's still in it, right? I mean, he's still slugging away. Do they still get up at 3.30 in the morning? That's dairy. Okay, they don't get up at 3.30 in the morning. Okay. But he's a proud fifth generation. I feel sorry for him. We had a fifth generation plumber here about eight or ten years ago. One of the biggest plumbing outfits in the United States. They had like uh, 2,500 plumbing trucks. He told his kids not to be plumbers. His father told him not to be a plumber. His grandfather told his father not to be a plumber. His great-grandfather, blah, blah, and the other ones. And the first generation says, you're going to be dealing in shit, pun intended, the rest of your life. But he's a plumber. So he came here wanting to, me to unplumb him, if that's the right terminology. And when one of our toilets broke in the castle, he just, he couldn't help himself. He fixed it. We've had other plumbers come. They can't help themselves. My favorite story from years ago, back in the 90s, we had an infomaniac here, a gal, really pretty gal. Um, unbeknownst to me, she fucks almost every guy on the estate. This is before your time, Duncan. But, yeah, sadly, yeah. Uh, uh, almost everybody in the seminar, and she says, Mr. P, I just can't help myself. Well, fast forward to you, your actions, you can't help yourself. At least she's getting her nuts off, or trying to. But I can't fill up your QLA cup, so to speak, until you empty it of all the horseshit. We had a gal here back in the 90s who spent about a quarter of a million dollars on self-help shit. In those days, uh, cassettes and that kind of thing. Some of you are already signed up for another seminar when you leave here. I don't ask that question on your questionnaire anymore because you used to make me throw up. And you, you know who you are. You're here, some of you are here just to tick the box, to see the madman, the crazy one. The fact that I'm the most successful of all time the goat, as they say, you're not here for that reason. Because all my material is free on my website. Every single bit. The only thing that's not free on the website are the 10 to 15 webinars you're going to see of my successful students and Ravi and his wife. You're going to see in person. But other than that, everything is online someplace. 90 or 95% of it's online on my own website. Some of you already have chairmen. Some of you have already ostensibly built a dream team. Some of you have had to go and make an acquisition or two. Yet you're still here. How is that possible? We don't have that many bald people. Normally we have more skinheads. And I'm, I don't know what that means. I don't know if there's any data to, to, to support whether you're good, bad, or indifferent. You've heard me say this on the YouTube. Assuming the way that you're trying to create generational wealth already is like uh, 150,000 years old, the information. You still think the world is flat. 
you still think the world of building generational wealth is flat. And then back in the day when you thought, you'd go over the edge, right? you go over the precipice. Well, this is the last town, the last bar, the last estate, a drinking bar, the last estate before you go into the abyss. Some of you are here because you think that you can round out your already ineffective model. By the way, your model sucks. I already told you that, but I'm, just so you understand. Because he's Austrian, and he's kind of a half-assed Nazi. So, I mean, it sucks. It, it has so many flaws in it. Uh, I, I wish I had the flaws so I could feel my bald head up with the hair I would have if I had the flaws, as many flaws as that had. You're here thinking that you're going to get one nugget, or as Ty Lopez would say, you're going to get one tip. There are no fucking tips. I said for years and years and years, you're only 2,000 cold calls away from being a millionaire. Well, now the, the kids, because of automation, IT, et cetera, you're 1,200 call, cold calls away from being a millionaire. But you won't make the 1,200. You won't make 500. You won't make 300. Why would you spend the money to come here, which I think is peanuts, if you're not going to follow the steps? Because you don't think you deserve to be wealthy. You don't think you deserve to have built a generation of wealth. I'm just informed by the, uh, I forget, the Bank of England. Uh, somebody said uh, that uh, high net worth is considered a net worth of 30 million. High net worth. Not to me, but high net worth. But the QLA system, the model that has worked for 50 years, 30 years for you guys, or guys like you, is the closest you're going to ever get to immortality. They'll be naming streets after you. Schools. Maybe even churches. Immortality. It's the closest you're going to get. Some of these people I had to drag across the goal line. Now, it's funny that Ravi knows most of my uh, Hall of Shame boys that I train. Of course, you, after you hear him, you'll better understand why he knows some of those guys. And these are only the guys that allow me to use their name. The question marks are when they die, I can flip their name up there quick. Any questions? Good. I won't answer your question. Okay, you can ask one of the other guys how you get your dick wet. Now, in 2021, 40% of the women under 30 didn't have sex here in the UK. That sounds pretty awful, doesn't it? It's even worse because it's 43% for men. How many of you, English isn't your primary language? OK, so when I say for stain, um, do, you, do you get it? Now, since some of you haven't had sex in five years, that probably doesn't sound so bad, does it? It's beyond my comprehension that 30-some percent and 40-some percent of the men and women here in the UK, I can't speak, that's the only stat I see. And my fact check is right here, cat. <clears throat> I don't see what, Q, uh, what Corona's got to do with having sex. But if sex isn't part of your lifestyle, I guess you wouldn't miss it that much, huh? 150,000 years ago, if, um, if our young uh, black uh, lady friend was go walking down the street with, uh, yeah, him, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Austrian kid, and I liked her, I just hit him in the head with a club, kill him, and grab her by her long hair, and, you know, take her off to my cave and fuck her in the ass. And she would enjoy 
except for when he, she saw his head split open, if she had any feelings for him. It doesn't look like he had any feelings for the asshole anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. That's how it used to be. So we have it in our loins, figuratively. Aggression. They say I'm a dying breed. I am. There's not many of me left. That's true. But the good news is 98% of all the high-performance people are introverts, cunts, just like you. 98% are weenies, can't get your willy wet, just like you. Zuckerberg's an introvert. Musk is an introvert, although he's father seven or eight or 11 sons. Bill Gates is an introvert. Andrew Carnegie was an introvert. Just like you, a weenie cunt that squats the pee you ought to use tampons. Just like you. That's why the system has worked so, so easily, because when I first started, I thought I would have to find alpha males like me. But thank you, God, I haven't. Because it works for cunts that swat the pee, sit on the toilet instead of stand over it, just like you. The first few years that I was doing this program, from 93 to 97, 98, I was slightly concerned until I got my first super success that was a weenie just like you. And then one after another, after another, after another. And now 98%, if not 99% of all the people up there are weenie introverts just like you. So there's hope. There's hope. And I've said that at least a thousand times on YouTube. And maybe only on a subliminal level, or as the psychiatrist says, sub rosa limo, uh, sub rosa basis, you heard that. And you're here. Because we're not turning you into any alpha males. So don't delude yourself. And you boxing the day after tomorrow isn't going to turn you into an alpha male. There are people in this room that have never been in a fight other than yelling at your wife and then she knocks you on your ass. The people in this room that have never been in a um, ballroom brawl, forget that, a uh, uh, grammar school altercation. There's people in this room that have never been uh, smacked by their parents. The people in this room, which all the things that I've just made, I can't imagine. I can't even imagine that. And look how we are. We're fucked. The planet's fucked. Duncan, hit it! Oh, by the way, you stand up, you go look at the seating chart over there. Then they tell you where to seat. For some of you, it'll be a little difficult. Okay, you have to connect a couple dots. Then you go to the table that you're supposed to sit, and you don't sit down. The gals, the two of them, two of them can sit down. Then when everybody is around their seat, I say, please be seated. Then you sit down. You don't start eating until all the fucking food has been served. Otherwise, I jump on your face. Now, the, the, the guy with the broken leg who got his leg broken in a barroom brawl, he might enjoy that. But now that I know you have a, I, I take advantage of that broken leg, so you don't want that to happen. Okay, Duncan, hit it. Thank you.